So in this episode, we're going to cover how we can take each of our individual graphs that we had made and put them in together into one graph to visualize what our material is going to look like once we're done. So let's get to it. So once again, we're just going to go up, new, substance graph, and we're going to call this one trench mud just because this is going to be our finished material before we add our water levels so everything should be good it's saved from last time and we get the familiar black cube so what I want to start off by doing is going over to our previous graphs that we made and just clicking and dragging them into my graph editor here just going to give us a little bit more room to see and I want to start by just viewing our mud so I'm actually going to go up to our connections and I want to click material this is where it comes in handy for us to have been putting our ambient occlusion in the material group because now we'll be able to just click and drag and it will put it right into an ambient occlusion socket. However, like the other graphs, we don't actually have one. So I'm just going to do it real quick. So I've just quickly made our ambient occlusion output using it as ambient occlusion with the ambient occlusion identifier, naming it the same, and then putting it in the material group. Because once again, we are going to, in the next episode, take this graph that we make and use that node in another graph. So now we've got that all sorted out, we can go over to our mud graph and can we just click one and you can see that it's now going to put all the outputs in the respective socket. However, because we've added a new output, we need to just right click on our graph and view outputs in 3D. And now our ambient occlusion will show up. So I want to start blending our graphs together and the way I like to work is by taking a base graph what we're going to use is kind of the very bottom of our texture and I start with that one just like how we start making these graphs individually with our geometry I like to start with the node that we're going to see the most of or that's going to be on the bottom of what we're looking at in this case it's our mud so we'll start by connecting our mud and now the most visible next to our mud will be our rocks. And the way I go about setting this up is by just adding a blend node to each individual uh, connection or socket. However, I do know there is a node called the material blend node that lets you take in the inputs of two different material nodes or graphs. However, just for the sake of demonstration and seeing how it actually works, we're going to just blend each one individually. And I'm going to kind of cover how different maps interact with each other. So to start off, I'm just going to click on our base color node connection here. And we're just going to add a blend. And now I'm going to take our connection and just go back to standard so that we can do one at a time. And I'm going to take the base color of our rocks and throw it into here. Now, like usual, you're going to see that we get our blending mode as copy, and it's just going to show us the rocks. You can see, however, it's just going to show us the albedo of the rocks, but all the rest of the normals and height and ambient occlusion of our mud. And that's because we haven't actually blended anything else. So it's just going to show us the albedo blend and then the rest are we're going to get from our mud graph. So we're going to continue on just blending our nodes together. And we'll click on our next one, which is our normals. And we're just going to add another blend. Now from here, we're going to go up and do the same. Just take our normals of our rocks and plug in into the foreground of our blend. So I'm just going to do the last four and I'm just going to skip ahead so that you guys don't have to see me plug in the next of them. 
All right, so I've plugged in the rest of them, leaving, however, our metallic output because we're going to do the same as we've been doing for each of our graphs individually, where we have a uniform color, black, 16 by 16 pixels, and we're just going to run it through a levels node just so that we aren't wasting any resources. So again, I'll just speed through this. We want to set this to grayscale. We're going to run it through levels, but before we do that, we're going to change our output to absolute, bring it down to 16, and then bring this up to relative to parent. And now we are good to go for our metallic. So now I want to actually start seeing our rocks on top of our mud or ground texture. So again, we'll go working from top to bottom. And the way that we're going to do this for our albedo is we're going to need to use a mask because any blending mode that we choose is going to distort our color information. And it's not going to show either of them correctly together we're going to need to use a mask to say, hey, the white parts, I want to be the rocks, and the black parts, I want to be the mud. In order to do that, we actually have created a mask in our rock node, and it's through our height that we're going to do that. Now the problem is, if we take a look at our rock's height, we actually don't have a black and white, but more of a grayscale gradient of a mask. So we're going to need to go back to our trench mud and we're just gonna to need to run it through levels just to really crank up the contrast of our blacks and our white. So I'm gonna take our black and ramp it up. I'm gonna take our white and ramp it up. And as you can see, our black is a little too much because we're losing a, quite a bit of the rock. And now you can see the rock kind of coming out of the mud. If I get a good angle here. So now I'm gonna really crank down the white. And now you can see the rock really starts to emerge from the mud. So now we've got a blending of our albedo maps. And you can see we've got a little bit of a ring around there. So I maybe want to just bring this back down so that it blends in just a little bit nicer so that we're not going to have this ring around the rocks. And we want them to look like they're coming out of the mud, right? So that's looking pretty good. Next, we're going to move on to our normal maps. And we're displaying normal maps for both of the rocks and the mud. But the problem is the way that it's working is that we're actually getting normal maps that are blending in with each other. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use our overlay blending mode and we're going to ignore alpha so that we're going to just basically ignore any parts of our alpha map and just pretend that that doesn't exist. So don't use that to calculate any of our overlaying patterns because if we don't ignore it, you can see it starts to kind of cover up some of the normal map that we don't want to be covered up. We want to pretend like it's not there. So we're just going to ignore alpha and now you can see our rocks are coming in. All right, so now we've got both of our albedo and our normal map working, and it's starting to look pretty good right now as it is. Now, however, it is looking a little bit glossy, a little shiny. So that's going to be the next map that we are going to finagle and work with. And as you can see, I've only got my rocks as our roughness map right now because of our blending mode and we want to use our mask again to just mask off what we're using because we want to be able to use the roughness map that we made in our mud graph for our mud but we also want to be able to use the roughness map that we made in our rocks for our rocks so through this mask we're just going to say anything that's white 
I want you to use the roughness map of the rocks, but anything that's black, use the roughness map of our mud. And now we get this nice seamless looking map. And if we were to go back into our mud or our rock graphs individually and update our roughness maps, they would actually update in this graph here and then update for the material that we're making. So that's one of the handy things about Substance Designer is that you never actually put yourself into a corner because you can always go back and just change it as, as you want. So now you can see that the graph is really starting to come to life and our rocks are popping out beautifully, but we're not really getting the height data of the mud. And that's because again, through our blending mode, we're only getting our height map from our rocks. So in order to fix that, we're going to just take our blend and we're going to put it over to screen. And now it's going to take all of the black from our height map. Now this is our mask, but it's going to take all of the black from our height map and just get rid of it. I'm just going to keep the white parts of our height. However, you can see that we're clipping at certain points and it's very jagged. And that's because our height map has become very, very white due to the blending mode. So we're just going to actually bump down the whiteness of our mud height here. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to take the white output and just start to drag it down a little bit. And now you can see that we're starting to get some more geometry in our rocks and we're just kind of bringing the overall level down of our mud. And now I think the mud's looking a little too flat, so I might want to bring up some of the black into it so that our recesses start to kind of go back down into our geometry here. Again, with a height map, just to reaffirm, we don't want to have anything that's too black and nothing that's too white because we will get that problem where stuff starts to peak and stuff starts to clip off. And lastly, now we're going to go down to our ambient occlusion. And with this, we're going to actually leave it on the blending mode copy. And we're going to use a mask to dictate where we do and don't want our ambient occlusion to show. And now you can see that we've got our rocks, our bigger rocks than the ambient occlusion, but we've also got the ambient occlusion of our mud. And now things are starting to come together. So we've just blended both of our mud and our rocks together. And the same process is going to go for blending both of these materials together with our twigs. So I'm just going to skip over creating the blends and plugging in all of the textures once again. And I'll meet you guys on the other side. All right, so now I've added all of our blends. I've plugged in all of our sockets into the outputs and I've got our mask going in to all of the required nodes that we need. However, I haven't cranked up our mask, so you can see that it's very, very uh, low contrast. So we're just gonna crank down the whites so that we can see what we're looking at. And now you can start to see it, it popping up on our material. However, we still need to mess around a little bit with some of the parameters of our nodes. On our albedo, it's looking pretty good. We're showing up our colors on top of our other two materials, so that one's okay. For our normals, we're gonna to need to do a little bit of finagling. Once again, we just wanna go down to overlay, and we wanna make sure that we are ignoring source alpha. And now you can see we're getting our bumps, and it's looking pretty good on our actual 2D normal map you can see that we're getting some slight elevation on top of our other geometry. However, that's going to most likely be the height map because we're only showing the height map for the twigs as of right now. So we're going to take a look down at our height and we just want to go and do screen to get rid of the black areas but still keep the white. 
And now you can see that we're getting this very shaky geometry, but still we're getting something that's lifting our little twigs off of the environment and that makes them just pop a little bit more. And I don't think we have to necessarily worry about how jagged they quite look because we're never going to see this at this close of an angle. We're always going to see the ground from something about this far and from here it looks pretty good. So I'll go back up to our roughness and truth be told it's looking pretty good because I've plugged in the mask it's going to take anything that we used as a rough map for our twigs and show it over the white parts and it's going to take all the black and interpret that as using any of the roughness information that we've plugged in to this blend node. So you can see that we've got the mud and the rocks with their own individual roughness maps and that's going to carry over now just putting over our twigs on top of that data. So we've got three different roughness maps working together but also independently from one another. And that's all due to our masks. So we'll go down to our ambient occlusion and you can see just by plugging in a mask we actually don't have to do any work because it's overlaid the twigs over top of all the other geometry and that's what I wanted because that's how I set up my chain of progression starting with our very very base material being the mud the next big objects which are going to be just over top of the mud but still underneath the twigs and lastly we have the twigs over top of everything nothing is going to be over top of the twigs so we don't have to worry about trying to make sure that they blend evenly because they're going to be on top of everything so that was just another quick tutorial illustrating how we're going to take all of the graphs that we had made before and put them together into one to visualize what our material is going to look like when we want to export it into our game engine. So in our next and final tutorial of the five part series we're going to take a look how we use the graphs that we've already created and run it through a waters levels node to get water within the lower recesses of our geometry. We'll also take a look at all of the parameters that we get with that node and how we can change it to have any real effect that we want it to have. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the final episode.